it all, you know how much I love the opportunity real estate gives you to build the kind of wealth and financial stability that for most of us, only real estate can. But what about your kids? So this weekend was Mother's Day and I got spoiled by my three kids just hanging out with me all day. We went to a brewery, we watched a movie, we actually watched Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. That took me way back. That was my book when I was a kid. But, and they suffered and endured with me. It was very cute. Uh, but as I'm thinking about Mother's Day, as I'm thinking about how grateful I am that they are already at ages 22, 23, and 25, financially stable. In fact, you guys know, I believe in HomeBot. I love the reports it pushes out. All three of my kids get a HomeBot report on their homes every month, and they talk about how much net wealth they have. Now, you could argue with me about the accurateness of the HomeBot value. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's about them getting excited about an opportunity that they had and will continue to have because now that door has opened. Now they understand something that a lot of people at age 21 simply don't. They aren't exposed to it. I know I wasn't. I didn't purchase my first home until I was 40. So today I want to give you three ways to prepare to purchase a home for your child and then three benefits of doing so. That's all we're talking about, because I can ramble with the best of them, but that's what we're doing today, because it's so powerful. It literally will change the trajectory of their life. So here's three ways to start preparing your child to purchase a home. The number one thing is credit. So if your child can't afford to qualify on their own and they need a non-occupant cosigner, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, they're going to have to have a credit score because you can buy a home without a credit score, but you have to be able to qualify on your own. You have to have the income and alternative lines of credit. And usually a kid, especially if they're in college or age 21, like my three were, they don't have that yet. In fact, they weren't really paying any of their bills yet. So if they can't prove that they've been paying their own bills for the last 12 months and have income to support that, then they will need me to co-sign. So I need them to have a credit score. So here's what I do. At age 16, I put all three of my kids on my credit card. Now, I chose a credit card that I had had for a long time. So it gives them that immediate length of credit. Now, an underwriter will see this and immediately know that it's not theirs. So you're going to have to come in with a secondary card, which I'll explain in a second. But this first step sets them up for success for the second step. So at age 16, I put them on my card and I don't just put them on a kitty card. A lot of times the credit card company will just want to give them an authorized user account and they'll just be able to sign a credit card or a charge. I want to give them full access. I'm making them a co-signer on that credit card. And even the credit card support person that was helping me on the phone said, you don't want to do this because then they can change your credit card. They can actually call up and they can make a change to their address. They can close the card. They can do anything that they want. <laughs> uh, no, no, they won't because then they'll be dead. And that would like... <laughs> Kill the entire purpose of doing it, right? They're not going to touch my credit card and change any of the terms or conditions or close the card. They're simply going to use the card. Now, here's the second part of that. I gave them this credit card. All three of my kids had jobs since early age 15. So all three kids had their own jobs to do their own funny money with. This credit card was just for gas, they would put gas on that credit card. That credit card uh, obviously came to my house because I had the primary card. The rest of the cards also had the same address and I would pay that every single month. They'd take, have their gas paid. Instead of me giving them gas money or my credit card, they have their own. When they turn 18, they're going to be offered credit cards. Most kids are. 
but they're going to be offered credit cards because now they even have a credit score and good credit history. So they're going to be offered some good credit cards. So we immediately got them a credit card that gave them cash back and went towards their bills. And so at age 18, they got their own credit card. We did the same thing. We used our address. They put gas on that card and every month that card bill would come to my house. I would pay it in full. By age 21, now they have two credit cards, so an underwriter's not gonna remove the first one because they have the second one. So now they have two credit cards, plus they have some student loans, which is great for your credit history. They all had over 740 credit scores. In fact, I think that they were closer to 760. All three kids had credit history and a fantastic credit score. So we were able to get them an interest rate that was best for that time. So credit card, massively huge win. That way I could come in behind them and co-sign. So that's what I want to talk about is the second thing to prepare for. What does that look like to you as a parent? So instead of trying to figure it out when you get to that point, Think about it strategically in alignment with your financial goals. Do I want to give them money and not co-sign? Do I simply want to give them a head start? Now, if you do that, they're going to have to have a full-time job and be able to qualify. Or do I want to co-sign with them? Do I want to be on the loan to help them qualify? Of course, I can be on title. I can choose to not be on title. We have people that just want to be on the loan but not have ownership. I would prefer to be on both, that if I'm on the loan, the liability, the responsibility, I'm also on title, I'm on the ownership, I have to be consulted in order to make decisions or changes to that mortgage. I want to be on both. I've had parents say both or either. So if you are willing to co-sign, you will use your credit history, your income, and your assets. You are pretty much the backing for that purchase. The kid is just on the loan because it's their primary. They're gonna get the benefit of being able to put as little as 5% down. They could even have the benefit of using a down payment assistance program, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. And they're certainly going to get those lower interest rates for a primary home. So you're gonna want to speak with your spouse, your significant other, possibly your CPA or your financial planner. What impact does this have for my goals? Because you don't wanna put yourself in a position where you risk your financial future to co-sign or do something like that for your kids. We all want the best wealth for our kids, but we do ultimately have to take care of ourselves as adults as well. So making sure you go into that with eyes wide open. So if you co-sign, you will want some guardrails on making sure that that monthly payment is paid every single month because if a payment is made late and that kid does not manage that mortgage payment, that can affect your credit score as well. It can show up as a mortgage late and drop your credit score. So obviously you want to have really thorough conversations around this. Then that third thing to prepare is to look at down payment assistance options. Chaffa does not allow for it, but MMA does. So you can actually have a non-occupant co-signer and get that child the down payment assistance to purchase that home. And that might put you in a position where you're able to help as well, because maybe your income is good enough to help them qualify, but you don't have the money to help them with the down payment. So that's another way that you can prepare. Education and a little strategy go a very long way. So let's talk about three benefits. So everyone really starts to lean towards setting up a 529 plan when their kid is born. It's kind of just the natural bend. It's what we're all taught. So if you set up a 529 plan, you're probably going to get, and even if you did get the market returns of 7%, a lot of 529 plans earn less than that. But if you got 7% and you were able to put money into a 529 plan, over 20 years, if you put $30,000 into a 529 plan, over 20 years, sorry, did I say 30? Over 20 years time, that $30,000 
could grow at a 7% average rate of return to about $100,000, $120,000. Now, if you're getting less than 7% rate of return, or maybe you don't even have $30,000 to put in in the beginning, maybe you're just dripping $5,000 a year into that account, then you're not gonna have $100,000. And have you checked out how much schools are lately? I mean, it's like DU is $75,000 a year. If you're talking about that kind of money, that $100,000 is not going to get your kid through college. And you made a lot of sacrifices in order to put that 529 plan to work. What if instead you purchased a home? What if you were either willing to move because your kiddos were little at that time, or even if you bought it as in a second home with 10% down or as an investment property with 20% down? Are the grandparents willing to put money into a 529 plan? Can you have them also contribute towards an investment? I'll have to talk to you about gifts. You can't do them on investments, but again, a little pre-planning goes a long way. We could talk about that strategy. But buying an investment property, say you purchased a $500,000 single family home in 20 years time at a 3.6% appreciation, that home could be worth over a million dollars. And if you had rental income that was offsetting your mortgage payment every single month for that property over the next 20 years, then all you put in was the required down payment. All that growth from that point forward was gifted to you through rental income. Of course you work for it. You had to maintain that property, you have to manage that property, you have to make sure that you're getting tenants in, but now you've got something that's building wealth. Now, when your kid is old enough, you can choose to either rent it to them while they're in college, or you could choose to sell it to them, or you could just simply rent it out, keep renting it out to somebody else because that kid decided not to go to college in your hometown, they went to college somewhere else, and the rent income from that property will offset their college expenses. Either way, that kiddo is quickly realizing the power of real estate and the opportunities it presents them as they start aging into adulthood. It is a massive opportunity for conversation and learning. All right, the second part of that is that long-term wealth. So not only is the comparison of the 529 plan such a no-brainer to me, but that asset is also reusable. So here's another benefit from purchasing real estate instead of a 529 plan. Because if that property is fully paid off in the 20 years and now that rental income is going to pay for college, or you could do a cash out refinance with no taxable hit, take that cash and pay for college outright, you have options. But here's the second layer to that. That asset didn't go away. Now it's worth a million dollars and that asset will continue to grow over the next 20 years. And what if I did sell it to my kid or I held on to it for my even myself, if I'm let's just say whatever you, age you are. If, you're, if your kid's 21, say you're 41. Your kid's 21, they're going to college, you're using this for rental income, you're 41 years old, then you've cashed it out or you're using that rental income. Either way, let's just say you've cashed it out, you've paid for college. Now for the next 20 years, tenants are paying down that mortgage again. At age 61, for you, you're looking at retirement. Now you have an asset that fully paid off your kid's college. Your kid got the opportunity to learn from your experience, the power of real estate and setting them up. So they're wanting to buy property, not only for themselves, but then they get married and they're wanting to buy property for their kids. You've changed the trajectory of their life, whether they bought it or you bought it with them and for them. But then at age 61, you have an opportunity to use that asset and that rental income to support retirement. Or if you sold it to them at age 41, they have the opportunity to cash out of that investment and purchase more investments, investments for their kids. Real estate is not just a singular transaction. I don't know if anybody watching this has a 529 plan, 
we did because we didn't know the power of real estate at the time. And once you use them, they are gone. It, they're gone. We used them up. All three of my kids are through college. There's nothing to show for it other than offsetting some of those expenses. And they certainly didn't offset all of it, but a small fraction of it. All right. Here's the third and most powerful, in my humble opinion, because it was Mother's Day, my opportunity as a mother to continue to provide education and support to my kids. This is the power real estate gives you that people don't even talk about or think about. My kids, all at age 21, because we help them purchase a home, so we help them put the 5% down that they needed and we were non-occupant co-signers for our children. They were the primary. It was their name on the home. They own it. Every single month, they have to collect rent. They had to find roommates. They had to write up and manage leases. They had to deal with tenant disputes. One roommate's doing this, another roommate's doing that. All of a sudden, you have to work with conflict resolution. They had to hire maintenance people. They call us up. The pipe's leaking. Great. That's a job for a plumber. Let's find a plumber. Let's start building up your resources. They mowed the yard. They watered the grass or they dealt with the burned grass if they didn't water it. They had to pay the bills, the electric bill, the cable bill. They had to set up the cable bill. They had great credit. They called up, gave their social security number and set up all of those bills. The amount of learning while your kid is 21 and still looking at you with those eyes that say, I love you, mom. Actually, they say mama and I love it. They listen to me still. So while they're under your oversight, give them the opportunity to have one of the most explosive amounts of learning, the opportunity of home ownership, the opportunity to manage their bills and their finances, to manage tenant and conflict resolution, to be able to fend for themselves and to understand what it means to take care of themselves in a space that's safe. Because real estate is so much more than money. Real estate is about options. You guys have a great rest of your week. Nicole Ruth with the Ruth team. If I can help you help your kid into home ownership, I am all in. Give me a call.